Hello everyone, David here. I stopped at uh, Henning's train store today on the way home from work and picked up a couple of things. Um, they had boxes of used stuff for like a dollar, some rolling stock, you know, some of them missing wheels and whatnot. And they had this guy in there. I guess they didn't know what it was. This is a Tyco dump car. And I have the piece of track that will make this dump. It works by little magnets in there and it rolls in. So I actually have two more of these, but there's no limit to how many you can put on. But uh, yeah, so that was a dollar. That's pretty cool. Uh, I got this set of trucks. They had boxes and boxes of uh, wheels and trucks and things like that. Let's so say you get a handful for a dollar, and I was like, well, this is all I need because what I want is the uh, the side covers here come off. This is for a Tyco. So I can easily just cut these off, and these will make one of my other locomotives look good. Um, what else did I get? Oh, here we go. How about this? Uh, a Lionel transformer. That's uh, post-war, I guess. No, pre-war, actually. That's probably like 1930s, 40s, something like that. Probably more like 1940s. Um, $2. Um, this this is sticking. I know these buttons don't work. I, I bet I could fix that. Uh, for $2, it's worth a try. So the reason that I went to the train shop was because I ordered some things off of the uh, off of eBay, and they said, if you pick it up, then you don't pay for shipping. And I said, well, that's great. It's on the way home from work, kind of. So what I needed was... Uh, some Lionel couplers here. These guys, you kind of have to be careful with them. Because, um, yes, I have a couple Lionel cars that need some couplers. Uh, namely, this guy here. Let's see, this coupler does not work. So, I need to replace that. And what you have to do is take that pin out of the bottom and replace it. Now, they said these would work with even like the post-war you know 1955 and the post-war trains actually had uh, a metal spring in there which sometimes breaks or gets bent but and this is all plastic but it's the same size and should still fit so I'm, I think I have one or two post-war trains that uh, we can test that out on but I'll try that so what else have I been working on uh, this little house here, I started this probably at least six months ago, maybe even a year ago. I printed it and there's like a bunch of pieces. And when you do 3D printing, you end up with a lot of extra plastic that you have to kind of sand off and pick off. So there's a whole lot of work to do after you print it. And then of course painting it, um, painting it several times. So the last step that I have to do is make some porch posts here. Um, they need another coat of white paint on there just some little wooden sticks that I got and uh, so I got to paint those again and put it in there so that's HO scale and the cool thing is I actually at the same time printed out a uh, N scale version of the same house uh, so that's the next project I guess to do an N scale version of the same house and just off the printer yesterday is this little shed here and again, like I was saying, when you print stuff with the 3D printer, sometimes you got to go back and clean it up. The edges are a little bit rough, and you have to pick off the excess plastic. But that's a cool little shed, I guess, or garage, something like that. That's what that's supposed to be to go with a, a house. So that's what I've been working on. So let's get to uh, repairing this coupler if we can. Oh, there was something else I got in the mail today. I didn't expect it to get here this soon. But uh, one of those things, I guess, a, um, what they call it an emotional buy or a, um, a binge buy or something like that on eBay. And I didn't expect it for another week. Uh, let's see what's in here. Look that. It even comes in a nice little carrying case. And what we have here is a drone. It's actually kind of cute so small alright so I know nothing about these drones well I know a little bit so uh, there it is I guess I have to charge up some batteries before it'll do anything and figure out how it operates we do have an instruction manual somewhere in there so 
So that'll be uh, another video for another day. So here's my hand. <laughs> you can see how big that is. Okay, let's get back to those uh, couplers. So I guess what we need to do is first get this pin out of here. That looks like that's going to come out easy enough. Trying to get a hold of it here. Okay. It's a little bit tricky to do to get this coupler in here where you need it. So I did that off camera. Let me get that pin back in there. There we go. So we got the pin in there. Push that in, it latches. Okay. Now on the other side here we have to flatten that pin out so that it doesn't go back out. So I'm going to start with this little pointed uh, punch or all whatever it is here. See if we can get that to no, that didn't do anything for it. And I've got a block of wood around here somewhere. Okay, so I couldn't find my punch. I had to go out to the garage and look around and still couldn't find it. So I just got this metal rod here that I ground down with the uh, bench grinder. And okay, all that's doing is pounding it into the uh, wooden block. Okay, so that kind of worked, I think. Okay, the coupler works. So the object is to make sure that it's loose enough that this works and yet that doesn't fall out. I think we're okay. I can get uh, maybe a small C clamp and press that down a little bit. You don't want to make it too tight. But there you go, a repaired coupler. Uh, that cost me, I think, a dollar and thirty-two cents for one little coupler, and we are back in business. Thanks for watching.